we shall call on one of the evangelists to give us the, the sermon in person of Prophet Chris. Let's welcome him. Let's clap for Jesus. Good morning and win today. Greet your neighbor, good morning and win today. Let us begin this message with a short prayer. Lord, as we are about to receive this message, I pray the word of God will penetrate deep into our hearts because it brings life, healing, deliverance, and salvation in Jesus' name. Amen. People of God, we are of course gathered here today, and I know Viewers from around the world are watching on Emmanuel TV to celebrate the life and the legacy of God's servants, God's own, God's prophets, T.B. Joshua. We, we should not use the word prophet lightly because the Bible says a prophet is someone whom God himself has put his word into their mouths. A prophet is one who is inspired to utter the deep things of God. A prophet is one who knows the opinion of God about himself and others. We just watched a small clip of the documentary of Prophet T.B. Joshua. It takes a prophet to keep such record because he knows his mission in this world is not just for this generation, but for generations yet unborn. You see, we, we, we are used to evangelists. We are used to pastors, but we are not used to prophets, especially in the generation we're living in today. We are not used to prophets because of the unique nature of their divine calling. But throughout human history, God Almighty has raised unlikely people given them special assignments for certain moments in time. Just open your Bible from Genesis to Revelation. We read the accounts of God's generals. People like Moses, who was the son of a Hebrew slave, who rose to lead his people out of bondage into freedom. What about David, the rustic shepherd boy, who became the greatest king in the history of his nation. What about Peter, the simple fisherman, who became the rock upon which Christ built his church? People of God, these were ordinary men who were used by God for extraordinary purposes and who made a lasting difference in their worlds. They made a lasting difference in their worlds. Even though these great generals of God we read about in the Bible, even though they are physically not alive in our midst on this earth today, They have left a legacy that lives on and on and on 
for generations yet to come. Their heroic example of faith has inspired the church throughout history. And in fact, the greatest impact of their lives was felt only after their physical departure from this world. Let me be bold in declaring something to you today. Our generation has been privileged to witness a genuine prophet of the Most High God. We know the generation we're living in today, a generation without faith and hope, a generation where it it seems as if the, the flame of the church is fading. Where today in the church you see that natural talents have been misinterpreted as spiritual gifts. And that is why God, in his infinite grace, wisdom, and mercy, raised a man from the humble home of Arigidi Akoko, Ondo State, Nigeria. A man named Temitope Balogun Joshua. God gave us this man from above for a short season to rekindle the flame of practical Christianity. Now, his divine assignment has come to an end. And the question for you and I is this. What will we do to keep this flame burning? What lessons can you and I learn from the extraordinary life of this great man who has left a living legacy? This will bring us to the title of today's short message, The Legacy lives on. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, the legacy lives on. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Matthew, chapter 6. Because of time, I'm going to jump straight to verse 6. Because there's a powerful lesson I want us all to learn from the life of Prophet T.B. Joshua. The scripture says this. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. In one of Prophet T.B. Joshua's recent messages, he said the following statements. The Holy Spirit is more interested in what we do secretly, privately, because the one you serve in secret will stand to reward you in the open. The world has witnessed Prophet T.B. Joshua in front of this altar. Week in, week out on Emmanuel TV, we have seen him minister the word of God. We have seen him demonstrate the power of God. We have seen him prophesy the opinion of God. We have seen him share and show the love of God. The world has witnessed him in front of this beautiful altar. But let me tell you something, people of God. The secrets 
of Prophet T.B. Joshua's ministry in front of this altar is his lifestyle behind the altar. When the camera has stopped recording, when the microphone has switched off, when the crowd's applause has ended and people have gone home, behind the altar. We see on Emmanuel TV the remarkable results. We see what happens here in this wonderful ministry. We see the spontaneous miracles, the powerful instant deliverances, the effortless healing, the amazing prophecies, the inspirational divine sermons. Yes, we see the results, but these are simply an overflow of Prophet T.B. Joshua's relationship with God. We, let me speak on behalf of disciples of Prophet T.B. Joshua. We have been privileged to live with the man of God and we have seen him behind the altar, behind the scenes. Never have I seen a man so committed to the cause of Christ. A man so conscious of God's presence in every step. A man so passionate about God's projects to, to sow to the spirits without expecting any material reward or gain. A man who invests in building lives, not building structures. <laughs> building people. A man who values processing more than results, who cherishes character more than gift, a man who daily dishonors himself to honor Jesus, the King of Kings, a man whose every breath was spent in the service of God to the very end. What a life, what a legacy. That's the secrets, people of God. That's the secret of this ministry. That's the secret of Prophet T.B. Joshua's strength. His intimacy with God, his covenant with God. The secret of this ministry is not the crowd. This, the strength of this ministry is not the crowd. It's not the, the miracles, signs, and wonders. The strength of this ministry is the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit who has sustained Prophet T.B. Joshua, who has strengthened Prophet T.B. Joshua through every trial, through every storm, through every persecution, all of us here know how his God-given vision was misunderstood, laughed at, mocked, attacked, thought to be too high for a person like him. But when a vision comes from God, nothing in this world can stop it. We are all witnesses. No persecution could break his focus. No rejection could stop his progress. No campaign of calumny could steal his joy or disturb his peace. He simply left every battle for God and gave himself to prayer. And today, the future has answered his adversaries.
that persecution, those attacks were simply a free advert for the grace of God in his life. They were a tonic to his anointing. What is happening today? At the beginning, they did not understand him, so they called him names. At the beginning, they did not comprehend him, so they condemned him. But today, the story has changed. The people that once condemned him are now the same people who are copying him. The people that said, over my dead body will I come to synagogue. Today, he is my spiritual father. His case has gone from condemnation to imitation. I think we have a lot of lessons to learn from Prophet T.B. Joshua. There is no signboard with his name, advertising his name, yet his name is written in the hearts of millions around the world. The synagogue church of all nations does not have branches, but our television channel, Emmanuel TV, is the most watched Christian television channel all over the world. <laughs> Prophet TB Joshua did not complete his secondary school education, but today, university professors sit at his feet to listen to his inspired teaching. We have a lot of lessons to learn from Prophet T.B. Joshua. Let me be bold in saying this. Prophet T.B. Joshua is the greatest and most effective ambassador the nation of Nigeria has ever had. A man who can fill crusades internationally, yet when he goes there, he doesn't ask for offerings. A man who attracts presidents of nations. Yet he doesn't show favoritism. He spends equal time with the widows and the weak as he does with the high and mighty. A man who is single-handedly responsible for 60% of foreign tourism to the nation of Nigeria. who has put on the world map the name Ekotun Egbe. We all know how many livelihoods are being supported by this ministry. How many people's income, businesses depend on the movement and running of this ministry. We are all witness today. We are all eyewitnesses. The ministry God has given to Prophet T.B. Joshua is changing lives, changing nations, changing the world. And I want to declare to the people of God on this holy altar, in the presence of the Almighty God, that the journey does not end here. The legacy lives on. The legacy is alive. Prophet T.B. Joshua left a living legacy for this living ministry founded upon the living Word of God. And as Romans 8 verse 39 says, nothing, people of God, nothing, nothing shall separate us from the love of God. The work of God will go on. But for you and I, let me ask this question. 
you have been inspired by Prophet T.B. Joshua's ministry, if you have been touched, healed, delivered, changed, motivated, moved by Prophet T.B. Joshua's ministry, at this time, it's not enough just to shed a tear or to pay a tribute. Let his legacy live on in you. Let his legacy live on in you. How? Now is the time to emulate his lifestyle, to follow his counsel. I can give you some examples. His counsel to leave your battle for God. To let go of offense, bitterness, resentment, bad feelings towards others. To take care of your heart. To spend more on others and less on yourself. To let love lead. Irrespective of race or religion. Even his final counsel to us, to watch and pray. Let his legacy live on in you by your attitude, by your character, by your approach to life, to see every situation as a reason to draw closer to God. People of God, what you will leave behind on your last day is more important than whatever you claim to achieve on this earth. Our work should not end when we pass on to glory. Our work should not end when our journey ends. The greatest tribute we can give to Prophet TB Joshua is for all of us here, viewers all over the world on Emmanuel TV. The greatest tribute we can give is to see that the work of salvation continues to reach unreachable places. Yes, the task is enormous. But with persevering faith, with the love of God in our hearts, the world is under our feet. The sky is the limit. And for this ministry, the best is yet to come. Let us rise up for a moment of prayer. If you once felt close to God, but now you feel distance, or if you have never known the reality of a relationship with Jesus Christ, it is enough to say this prayer. Dear Lord, I confess that I am a sinner. I call upon your holy name, Jesus Christ. Forgive all my sins. I believe you died in my place and rose from the dead. According to the scriptures, I receive you with my heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord for my salvation. People of God, you are welcome to the family of God. May God bless his word in the midst of our hearts. We will take a song right now composed by Prophet TB Joshua as you reflect on this message. God bless you.